Hello and welcome back to the shop. My name is Steven Schroeder, captain of the Ursus Fight Club. Today we're going to be pointing armor to a gambeson. Pointing armor to a gambeson is very important because it keeps the armor in place, which increases mobility and protection. Today I'm going to show you a few different ways of doing that, and I hope you find this video tutorial helpful. Right now I'm going to show you a few different types of arming points. I'm sure there are many different styles, but the basics remain the same. Now the arming points themselves are made out of, I'm using Latigo. It's about a seven or eight ounce Latigo. It doesn't have to be too thick, but if it's too thin, um, it'll rip through when it's put under pressure. Um, this is a no sew option, which is important when if you're needing to do something at the last minute, um, you don't have time to sew it on, um, kind of an emergency basis. What you would end up doing is deciding where you need to have this placed. Now the arming point is going to be the two lowest holes are that you're tying it to. The two upper holes, you have the, um, the aglets go through, um, through the gambeson, and then back out the bottom, and then you tie the armor to it. The way this is nice is that you have a much wider area of distribution for the tension, and it doesn't pull through nearly as easy. This will last a long time, but you need to make sure that you, know, you don't lose these, they don't come off as you untie your armor, etc., etc. It's nicer. In my opinion, if you go ahead and sew the arming points on and it lasts a little bit better. Now this is just the same basic type of latigo. Um, two holes that I'm going to have the arming points coming out of and holes punched um, very quickly in this case um, that we're going to use to sew down to the gambeson itself. This, is, this version came with uh, the gambeson that we're pointing today. Um, they were squares. We cut them down to make them a little bit smaller, uh, put in some holes, and this one has reinforcements of the grommets. Um, it's a nice option, but honestly, if your leather is thick enough, it's not going to pull through uh, under most circumstances. So we've got this square of leather. If I'm going to make a, a tie point out of this, um, I really love these smaller um, hole punches. It doesn't punch a hole as much as just forcing um, a hole in the leather. It spreads it apart based upon uh, whatever size hole you want to do. The smallest hole here is not going to be big enough to uh, pass the needle through, so we're going to take it to the biggest one so we can easily get the needle to pass through it. And then you just uh, take this and every time you punch a hole, boom, there you go. So sitting down and doing this doesn't take any time. This is much easier than getting one of the strike punches and having to strike all the holes in it. The other tools you're going to need for this are um, some sort of awl, um, sinew or wax cord, um, needles that are big enough for whatever uh, you're using to sew to pass through. The bigger the needle, the harder it is going to be to get through your gambeson. So the, the smaller ones end up being a little bit easier, but you do have to get the thicker cording through it. I've also found it helpful to have a small curved pliers um, that can be very useful for reaching and pulling cords through small holes. And uh, of course, a sharp pair of scissors. So we're gonna start by doing the shoulders and we wanna make sure that we have a good fit and that everything is working properly on them. Um, one thing I did notice is that this pair of shoulders moves and articulates very easily. It's nice movement. The other one is a lot stiffer. The uh, leather is thicker and it, these uh, lames here aren't moving very much yet. So you really need to get in here and work these things out and move them. The more you fight in something, the more smoothly it moves. It's just something odd about it. Um, the articulation smooths up. Just you know, give it some, some sweat time and it'll be fine. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to place this on his shoulder, making sure that we get it in the proper location. Uh, what is the proper location? We want to make sure that um, if this was lower uh, and in here, the edge of that metal could be driving into his shoulder, which is suboptimal. Um, if it's too high, it's not sitting uh, on the shoulder nice and easily. 
this one we can go ahead and snug up in here. The next question ends up being, where are we going to rotate it? I want to have this lower part of this shoulder pauldron going right down the arm. At this point, everything looks really nice. Um, we know this is on the proper arm because the buckle's in the front. Uh, it's shaped on there nicely. He's got plenty of room for movement. It's not too tight. So we're going to go ahead and mark where this is. Now, I have fallen in love with paint pens. Uh, this is just a paint marker in here. And I, it's got a nice small um, applicator so I can get into most holes and uh, really do a nice direct mark on everything. Now, these marks that are on there, that's not where I'm going to put the tie point. The tie point's actually going to be probably about an inch above that because one of the things that happens in the gambesons as you wear them throughout the day and the weekend is that they tend to sweat in them, they tend to stretch. And if you start off in the perfect location, by the end of the day, by the end of a long weekend, the entire piece of armor can be hanging too low. Always, always, always make sure that there's enough uh, room to really tighten these things up later. It needs to end the weekend in the proper location, not just start in the right place. Okay, let's go ahead and do the other side. over here. Again, we're going to make sure that this is sitting in the right place. Now one of the things I can do is I can have you go ahead and raise your arm. Ready to raise that. We can go ahead and have you move the arm around. Everything there is working properly as I'm holding it. So that's looking really good. Go ahead and stop moving. I'll go ahead and mark this here. Now one of the things I just noticed is one of my marks was going to be almost right on top of a seam. And so I'm going to go ahead and I, I just shifted it just like a quarter inch to make sure that this hole that I'm doing is right in front of that seam instead. Uh, that little bit of a motion is not going to make any difference in the end, but it will make sure that we don't have problems doing the attachment. Now, the arm harnesses um, came with uh, this tie point in the back. So we're going to be uh, planning on suspending this one from the back. And the way this is hanging nice and straight, it should be able to sit on the arm very nicely. And uh, we're going to go ahead and have him put his arm in here. Now, what I'm wanting to do is make sure that this elbow cup is right in the elbow. So if we go ahead and put that in the uh, buckle there. Can you buckle that one just to the elbow. I just want to make sure this is setting in the right spot so we can see where this is. Okay, so checking the fit on that, you want to make sure that when this thing is here, roll your wrist back. Uh, can you? Now, this is something we're probably going to have to come back in here later and uh, modify the, this band brace. This one's just a little bit too long. You might actually have a hard time when he has the gauntlet on getting enough wrist movement. It's better than having it be too short. So at this point, we can still modify this thing. We can, not a big deal. You should always expect that you have to modify your armor when you first get it to make sure that it's maximized for you. Just because something's made for you doesn't mean that it's gonna be optimized immediately off the shelf. So in the back here, um, this is where these holes are. Um, I can mark them. I'm just gonna go ahead and mark an inch above these at this point. Um, right in line with where those holes are. I'm just giving a mark, I'll be able to see those. Um, and that's where I'll mark those. Let's go ahead and do the other side. Go ahead and take that one off. Go ahead. So bend your arm. I'm just gonna have you bend the arm in here and that'll position this where it needs to be. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark these holes. So an inch above again. Again, what ends up happening with fabric as it gets worn, um, it's gonna stretch. This is gonna sag down. Uh, this is gonna extend in here and here. So if we had this tied here perfectly at the beginning of the day, within a couple of hours, this thing's gonna be riding low. He's gonna have problems moving his wrist and this elbow isn't going to be right in the right place, so even opening and closing your arms is going to be more 
problematic. Or it gets loose and this entire thing starts shifting and um, moving around as you're trying to fight, which is at best distracting and at worst is giving a gasp in protection, which can be dangerous. Now we're going to take the arming points we just made and figure out where they need to be on the gambeson. So we have the points that we have marked on here. Now, being mindful that these were the exact placement that we want on the shoulders, we're going to move the actual ties up about an inch above those. Um, again, this gives us uh, the ability when the uh, everything stretches, we can still tighten the shoulder and get it to be where it needs to be. Um, now, when I'm doing this, what I found uh, works best uh, for me, I'm just going to go ahead and see where those holes are. We're going to line these up here. Now, I'm going to use the awl and I'm going to push a hole through the fabric. It's very important not to punch a hole in the fabric because you're going to cut the threads and everything will start to unravel and it uh, causes problems. I'm just going to go ahead and push holes on both of these, uh, push it right through. Then I'm going to take this off and we're going to use a little bit bigger awl to go ahead and force it open again. And it'll be big enough for us to go ahead and put the ties in that he's going to use. Now I tie the uh, leather directly to the gamison. I'm going to put the tie in here. We're going to tie this in place and then we can sew this. Um, and we know this is going to be exactly where it needs to be. Some people prefer not to punch holes in the gamison. Since I'm just using an awl and spreading everything out, we're not likely to have problems with anything falling apart. And in my mind, it gives you a little bit of extra uh, security having the gambeson behind this that's acting as a washer and distributing the force. So these would have been nice if they had a little point um, on them. We don't have that. Um, so what I have done in the past is I just pull, push the pliers through and then I open them up. I put the all in there and I can go ahead and pull this out. See, I'm going to try to do that next time and leave it in place when I do that. That was my little magic trick there. You like that? Okay. See if I can manage to do it just part way this time. Okay. Now this is something that does happen when you are taking your armor off as well. You can uh, be taking your armor off and this tie pole will come completely out and it's kind of annoying because then you have to um, get it to go through all the holes again. What you can do instead is you can tie this in a knot um, before you tie it into the armor and that way it's always tied. This one's being just especially special. So when tying armor on in general, always use a square knot. You know you're doing a square knot when after you've done the half knot, um, notice that this overlaps the underside uh, tie. So I'm going to start by putting the rope on that side and when it flips under, both of these ropes come out on the same side and this generally looks square. Um, this is less likely to fall apart uh, while fighting. This isn't rocket science. Don't get stressed out about it. They don't have to be perfect. So we're just going to make uh, four of these rectangular and make them all about the same shape. Now the holes that we're going to put in here, we want to have about the same width as the holes that we're using. These were the original uh, ones that he had. Um, notice those are about an inch apart. And so that's the, the good spacing. I usually do about three quarters of an inch. Either one works fine. This is now bugging me that it's a trapezoid. So we're gonna go ahead and punch the holes in the center first. Good 
again, this is one of my favorite tools for punching holes. Now, when I'm punching these, I don't want to get the holes too close to the edge of the leather. I want to be in a little bit because I don't want the thread to pull out through that. Also, I'm making the holes that are going to be, you know, spaced far enough apart that we're not just going to um, pull right through the leather that way as well. Okay, so we have these things now cut out and done. I wish they were a little more even, but they're never going to be together, so it's going to be fine. When I've pushed the all through, um, one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch the fabric on both sides. That keeps all the layers from uh, all the layers together, and then I can push this through nice and easily. When that's done, I can take the next all and push it through. Now sometimes if you have really thick padding, it's hard to keep everything in line as you do this. So as I take the all out, I'm pushing the other piece in immediately, just by hand. So it comes through, boom, and you're done. Um, if you try to put those tools down and then do it after the fact, uh, frequently you're gonna be frustrated. So we are done with this side. Tie this together, and then do the other two on the other side. Then we'll get to sewing them in place. Okay, so something else that you can do when you have the all come out, I'm using those small pliers of mine. I can open up the jaws, and then you can insert the lace into those and then pull it through. Um, sometimes that's easier than trying to deal with feeding it through. Again, I'm pinching the fabric, pushing in the pliers, opening them up. This is especially useful when dealing inside of uh, sleeves, trying to get elbows and stuff pointed. So this is very dense material and just doing a little test fit, it, I can kind of force this needle in there. When I used the, uh, the blunt needle, it had no interest whatsoever in going through, so we're not gonna use that one. So getting started, this is a waxed cord. It's not Sino, but it's a wax synthetic, um, which works just fine. I'm going to pinch it to get it to be a little bit flat to see if I can get it to go in the eye of this needle. And this might take a little bit of doing. Um, I've generally had a preference to um, double up the uh, thread, making it a little bit more secure in my own. Vision. So I've just done a solid knot in there. I don't want the knot too close to the end of the uh, thread because they have a tendency to roll out. Um, and I'm just going to pull the needle until it's nice and even. Here we go. So the challenge is being able to have the needle coming up through the fabric. So what I will do at this point is I'm just going to push the all through so I can see the all coming out and as I'm pulling this out I just replace it with the needle and that is the easiest way of getting it through. Now I'm having a challenge right now of pulling this through because the material is so dense so I'm just using a pliers to help ease it through, gentle it up. Now I'm not going to pull this, when I start off I'm not going to pull this all the way tight yet. Instead I'm going to use the awl again, push this through, make it easier to get the needle in there. This is taking a little bit more time, but it's really going to make everything else easier than forcing it. Um, now, I, what I tend to do is to um, go through uh, the thread on the other side and then pull it tight. That kind of locks it in, that way I don't have to form my own knot. Um, the rest of this is just going to go ahead and be repeating as necessary. So again, we see where this uh, all is coming through, replace it with the needle, we're done. And then we're going to go back and forth doing this until we're done.
Okay, now to finish it off, um, nothing spectacular here. I'm just going to go underneath one of the pair of threads. And try not to get in the fabric. Just put it underneath there and uh, put the thread through the loop that the other side showed. I do that once, and I do it a second time. Again, push it underneath the threads. Um, the loop that is formed here, just pass the thread through that. Pull it down, snug it up, snip it off, and we're done. Now, notice when I did the, the sewing, I went ahead, uh, went around once, and that left um, spaces in the leather that you could see as I was halfway done. I tied it off, and then I went around uh, the exact opposite holes, uh, so it's a nice solid seam here. If you only tie it off once, if a thread ever breaks, it's just going to unravel and fall apart. I really recommend in all things that you tie off a couple times. This way it's done twice, it should be bulletproof. So we have the first one tied on. Let's go ahead and see how that one fits. Uh, just so you know, the buckle always goes in the front of the shoulder. Some people ask that question. Um, for myself, when I do the ties, I usually leave a half knot in the top of the tie. That way when you take off the armor and you pull on one of the things, you have some resistance before the thread just gets pulled out. So let's go ahead and tie this sucker into place, see how it does. So that is going to be pulled into a nice spot here when I move the arm. Okay. So when we uh, tie this, you can say left over right, right or left. I just look for the uh, whichever side the string crosses over. Put this on the same side. When you flip it over, both of these are coming through the same spot at that point. Here's some nice square knot. It's going to stay there. And then Uh, they have to break the buckle in. I, by the way, whenever I do these straps, I always like to have these as loose as possible. I do not like um, tight shoulder straps, especially when it goes underneath an arm harness. So when we have this set up for you, we'll go ahead and trim off um, the extra straps so it doesn't stick out. But how does that feel? Feels great. Okay. So you saw what I did to get the, uh, the, the ties in place, do all the sewing. You saw everything there. We have video of it. Why don't you go and finish up the rest of them and bring it back. We'll see how you did. All right. Okay. See you next time.